Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, we're talking about ESDE, which stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Emulation Station Desktop Edition, depending on how you want to interpret that. Anyways, ESDE front end just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, ESDE version 3.1.0 is the latest update. This one's got a whole bunch of bug fixes, performance improvements, a whole bunch of translations, and even more. For example here, they've added in translations for Spanish, French, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, and even more. And they've also dramatically reduced the start time for the video and slideshow screensavers on devices with poor disk I.O. performance, like Android. And additionally for Android, they've added in WinLater, so there's now support here for the PC Arcade systems, Taito Type X, and Microsoft Windows. That is a very big one. And on top of that for Android, they've added in Nudes as an alternative DS emulator. On a side note here, Nudes was also added in as an alternative on PC, and they've also added in support for the new Lime 3DS binary names on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. There is a whole bunch more here. If you use ESDE, you may want to update to the latest version. And speaking about WinLater, next up we're talking about, well, you guessed it, WinLater, Windows emulation on Android. And someone here is claiming that they've got Grand Theft Auto 5 running amazingly on Android now. Their device is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. They're using WinLater 7.13. And they say they're getting between 40 to 100 plus FPS on their device. They say it's an absolutely flawless experience, no glitches, stutter, or lag of any kind. And based on the screenshots, it seems like they're telling the truth here. The frame rate is looking good. As a bonus here, this person also listed the setup that they had in order to achieve this, and they are using Kimchi's second latest turnip driver, so not the latest ones here, and also a few different things. If you are curious about this one, like everything I talk about, link will be in the description below. And continuing to talk about stuff, next up we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Ryu Jinx. And Ryu Jinx just got a brand new update that really improves the performance for a certain game. So as of Ryu Jinx version 1.1.1388, it massively improves performance around two times as much in Castlevania Dominus Collection. And speaking about updates, next up we're talking about an indie game on Steam I'm immediately going to be putting in my cart after this video, and that is Anomaly Agent. Anomaly Agent just got a brand new update to make it compatible with Linux. Over on Steam, it's got an overwhelmingly positive review score with over 6,000 reviews. So here's their official update note. We are excited to share that Anomaly Agent is now accessible to Mac and Linux users. We've listened to your requests and worked hard to make our game available on a wider range of platforms. With this update, you can now enjoy Anomaly Agent on Mac and Linux operating systems. And yes, it's Steam Deck Verified. Anomaly Agent is currently on sale for a whopping 50% off, and it's not very expensive overall. I mean, I think it'll cost you less than 10 bucks. If you've played this game, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. And if you're going to pick it up, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Next up, this one is a big win for authorities. An ultra dangerous fake video game ring that was worth $50 million was smashed in Italy. And it's basically a whole bunch of fake retro consoles and counterfeit games. So the BBC article says a video game trafficking ring has been smashed by police in Italy after fake vintage consoles and games worth almost 50 million euro were seized. Among the counterfeit games were popular titles from the 1980s and 90s, including Mario Bros, Street Fighter, and Star Wars. Around 12,000 consoles holding over 47 million pirated video games were seized by police. It's said here that this counterfeit stuff was all from China and was imported to be sold in specialized shops or online. All the devices were fitted with non-certified batteries and electrical circuits and did not meet EU technical or safety standards. There seems to have been about nine people in total in this trafficking ring, and if found guilty, they face up to eight years in prison. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Do you think the world is a better place and a safer place now that these people were arrested? And speaking about things being shut down, next up here we're talking about Splatoon 3. And Nintendo announced after two incredible years of Splatoon 3, regular updates will come to a close. Don't worry, Splatoween, Frosty Fest, Spring Fest, and Summer Nights will continue with some returning themes. Updates for weapon adjustments will be released as needed. Big run, extra work, and monthly challenges will continue for the time being. 
So that's it for Splatoon 3, aside from recurring minimal things to kind of keep the game going. Any big updates are pretty much done. And absolutely no surprise here, someone has leaked that Splatoon 4 is currently in development for the Switch's successor. I mean, you could basically say that there's a new Mario in development for the Switch successor, or a new Zelda, or possibly even a new Donkey Kong or something. And chances are you would be right, because these games are kind of staples for the platform. Let me know your thoughts about the upcoming potential Splatoon 4 on the next Switch. And speaking about Switch, next up we're switching over to Linux and talking about MX Linux. And MX version 23.4 Libretto has just dropped. Now this one is built on Debian 12.7 Bookworm and features a Linux 6.1 kernel. It is worth pointing out that the 6.1 kernel applies to XFCE, KDE, and Fluxbox. AHS uses 6.10, and XFCE has been updated to version 4.18. And speaking about kernels, next up we're talking about Linux kernel 6.11, which has just been released. This one has a whole bunch of bug fixes, optimizations, improvements, and even more. And there's a whole bunch of improvements for gaming handhelds. I mean, there's stuff in here for the ASUS ROG Ally X, there's stuff in here for the Snapdragon X1 Elite, the Orange Pi 3B, and even more. Feel free to check out the change log if you're very interested, or if you like to be on the cutting edge of things, just feel free to update your Linux kernel. Next up, I'm a little bit surprised about this one and very curious to see if it shapes up and how it shapes up and rolls out but there may be something very good that has come out of this whole CrowdStrike situation that happened a few months back. And that is right here. It says Microsoft plans to remove kernel access for security solutions, which would affect kernel level anti-cheats like Vanguard, BattleEye, and Faceit. That would be amazing for gaming, especially for Linux. However, it's being misinterpreted a little bit, and that's why I'm very curious to see how all of this shapes up. So a lot of people are saying that Microsoft is going to remove kernel access from these anti-cheats, which isn't necessarily correct. Microsoft will still keep kernel access for some stuff. For example, this is right from Microsoft's blog post where all of this information sprouted from. Windows 11's improved security posture and security defaults enable the platform to provide more security capabilities to solution providers outside of kernel mode. That doesn't say get rid of kernel mode, that is just additional options. So in my opinion, I don't really see kernel level anti-cheats going anywhere. I see a few more options and a few more alternatives, but I still see kernel level anti-cheats sticking around and developers still using them. Next up, we're talking about Mortal Kombat on the NES. And if you're unfamiliar with that game being on the NES, I wouldn't blame you at all. Anyways, the source code for it has been now made public. It's up on GitHub. So if you head on over to GitHub, everything is right here. It's says this is a hack of the Hummer team's bootleg Mortal Kombat 2 cartridge which was actually a demake of Mortal Kombat 1 for the NES. It's got improved graphics, a new sound engine, improved music and sound effects, and bug fixes and yeah everything is right here. Now I don't remember talking about this one in a news video before but I could be wrong here. I mean we talk about a lot almost every single day but this appears to have been released last year, so I don't necessarily think this is brand new. If you've played it before, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Next up, if you're a fan of Mega Man and a fan of Brawlhalla, you're probably gonna like this news quite a bit. There's a brand new Brawlhalla and Mega Man crossover event that's happening on September 25th. I am very curious about this one. It's been a while since I played Brawlhalla and I may pick it back up again just to check out this Mega Man collaboration. And last up here, we're talking about Game Boy emulation with Pie Boy. And Pie Boy is a Game Boy emulator written in Python and just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, the latest update here is version 2.3.0. And the big thing about this update is the addition of GameShark cheat support. So if you like to cheat in games with a game shark, well, this update might be for you. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state. <laughs>